Welcome back to the Orange Bloods Texas Football YouTube channel. I am Ari Tepkin, and each and every week we like to preview the Texas Longhorns opponent with somebody that knows the opposition. And nobody knows the Oklahoma State Cowboys quite like Robert Allen, good buddy of mine from PokesReport.com and the Oklahoma State Radio Network. What's up, Robert? How are you? Uh, doing good. Doing good. Got through the storms that passed through Oklahoma last night. No, no tornadoes around here, so good to go. That's always good. Um, no, it's weird to have tornadoes in the fall, but we had, there were probably about 20 tornadoes around the state the last 24 hours. Yeah, no kidding. You'd think April, you know, May, not yeah. <laughs> October, November. That is bizarre. Uh, all right, so this game sets up well for Oklahoma State from a standpoint of Texas is coming off a very, very emotional loss, and Oklahoma State's coming off a bye week. Yeah, you know, in fact, we do a journal. Uh, Mike Gundy has a rule against first-year players doing any media. He wants them to be in the program a year before they do any. Well, we have a six-year center that transferred from Miami of Ohio. And with NIL, uh, we went ahead and hired him to do a journal. And I don't think Gundy was bent out of shape over it. In fact, he wanted some of the players to get NIL money. So it's Danny Gidlewski. So I was talking to Danny yesterday. We did his journal, and uh, he's from Indianapolis and, you know, having transferred from Miami, Ohio. So he couldn't go home. He stayed here, watched the game. And, I mean, this guy was geeked out over watching, you know, OU Texas. He goes, man, what an atmosphere. What a game. What a rivalry. He goes, he goes I can't wait. I mean, do you think it'll be like that in Austin on Saturday? And I'm like, it'll be pretty good. But I, I didn't have the heart to tell him that. There's a lot of difference between when Texas and Oklahoma State play and when Oklahoma and Texas play in the Cotton Bowl. But I Tom, wait for Bedlam. Imagine, Bedlam will be yeah. will be close. Bedlam, <laughs> yeah, he'll get his dose. He'll get his dose with Bedlam. But uh, no, Oklahoma State, they're healthier than they've been in, since really the beginning of the season. They had that break. Most of the players watched the game. Maybe not all of them were as charged up as Danny Gadlewski because most of them have been around this part of the, you know, the world and have watched OU Texas every year. But yeah, it's, it's a good setup. I, I think Mike Gundy feels real comfortable and feels like his team came back from the break. Well, and uh, they'll go down and, and take on the Longhorns. And a lot of the, a lot of the situations here, I think favor Oklahoma state, especially with what that defense is that they're carrying down to Austin. Yeah. And let's start there, Robert. This is strength on strength. Texas has, under Casey Thompson had an elite level offense and Oklahoma state has a very elite level defense and has, you know, for a year and a half now. So where do you think Oklahoma state's defense will be able to stop Texas's offense? Well, the first thing they'll try and do is they'll try and control B. John Robinson, B. John Robinson. And, and uh, they'll prop my, my guess is you'd have an extra guy in the box. I think Oklahoma tried to have an extra guy in the box. Most of the, uh, uh, most of the game on Saturday down in the Cotton Bowl. The one thing about this Oklahoma State team that, that is good, and, I, and I, again, I believe B. John Robinson is one of the best, if not maybe even the best running back in the country. But I think Malcolm Rodriguez and Devin Harper are two of the best tackling linebackers. The defensive line for Oklahoma State, even though you may not know many of their names, they're kind of a no-name group, but they're really good at covering up gaps and covering up blockers, letting Malcolm and Devin do their thing. And then you've got a couple of safeties, especially in Kobe Harvell Peel, but also in, in Jason Taylor, the second, that love to come up into the box and make tackles. So Oklahoma State's, this is one of the better tackling teams Oklahoma State's had. And if you're gonna stop B. John Robinson, you better be able to tackle because He's like I said, he's pretty good. And he's he's good not only in the fact he can break tackles with his his speed and his agility, but he's a powerful young man. So when you hit him, you better bring you better bring some stuff with you. The, the loss of Trey Sterling that hasn't seemed to make much of a difference for Oklahoma State, which is surprising because this is an elite level player. It is, but I think a lot of people knew what was behind him in Jason Taylor the second. Uh, he was a, a Carl Albert kid, Midwest City, Carl Albert High School, and he was the defensive player of the year in high school in Oklahoma. Uh, he's played a lot. If you remember last year, 
He's the guy that uh, when Israel Antwine forced the fumble at Kansas State, Jason's the one that grabbed it and went 84 yards with it for a touchdown. He had that onside kick recovery against Tech that he took for a touchdown. Um, he's had a lot of interceptions. He's kind of a ball hawker type guy. But the other thing is, he's almost 220 pounds. Wow. Kobe Harville Peel, I think, is 220. Uh, so you've got some big safeties that, like I said, they, they're, they're good tacklers. They're almost like uh, hybrid linebackers when they come yeah. into the box. Now, yeah. they still can cover on the back end. And I didn't mention the third safety because Tanner McAllister, he doesn't come in the box as much. He's more of a – he's what they call the strike, which is a combo corner safety. So he would be the guy that would get Joshua Moore or somebody that's lined up in a slot. Would have been Jordan Whittington before he was hurt. That would have been his task, where Harvell Peel and Taylor are going to get the task of coming up and helping with Bijan Robinson or covering, you know, the, the the tight end and Brewer, somebody like that. Robert, let's talk Oklahoma State's offense. I mean, this has been a weird year uh, in terms of our perceptions of Oklahoma State going back last decade versus what this team is. Really good defense, really good running game. Passing game is it's what's been catching up, but you know, obviously, is – um, you've been talking about that they've just had a ton of injuries at the wide receiving course, so much so that they're counting on Billy Tubbs' grandson, a former walk-on, to make plays for them down the stretch to be Boise State. So give people an idea of Jalen Warren, and then, you know, what's this receiving core like at this point in time? Well, Jalen Warren, and, and I, I told you guys with, with the Big 12 show, uh, going back in the spring, I mean, when he transferred in, um, they knew he was powerful. He's 5'8", 215 pounds. That's that's really similar to the dimensions that, that Barry Sanders was when he was here. Big old, you know, got those big thighs and, and powerful. But what they questioned was how fast was the guy? They kind of thought he was probably 4'6", which in, in the college football world is the back end of speed for a running back. But when he clocked his 40 here, he clocked a 4'5", electronic. Mm -hmm. And like, whoa, now, and then they figured out he had good hands so he can catch the ball out of the backfield. So he, he was pretty much circled coming out of the spring as, okay, LD's the first guy out there, but if LD's not getting it done, we're going to go with Jalen. And see, this week they'll have Desmond Jackson back. Mm -hmm. So now they've got Jalen, you know, LD's gone for the year with his injury, but they've got um, Jalen. Desmond's back, and you've got Dominic Richardson, who's been playing quite a bit and getting better. Um, yeah, I love him. And, and the other thing, too, is he's uh, – Gundy's trying to get him to, to knock it off at practice and, and just stand over there and relax. And They don't need to see him run reps in practice. But the guy, he'll go down to the inside drill and take reps down there, which is – that's your front seven defense, front seven offense, smacking each other pretty good. And – he, he just can't get enough. He is a football um, gym rat. So he wants to be out there as much as he can. Um, the receiver position, that's kind of what I was hinting about the open week. You've now got Bryson Green back with Blaine, the two twins from Allen, Texas. So they're both back. Jaden Bray is back healthy again, the freshman from Norman. Tay's, you know, even healthier. He, his deal was an ankle. He missed the Tulsa and Boise games was back for K-State, but even then, I don't think he's been 100%. Now, after the bye week, he's he's closer to that. Um, yeah, they just got everybody, everybody other than Langston Anderson, who broke his foot in warm-ups for the Missouri State game, everybody's back now. So they're in pretty good shape at the wide receiver position, which means no excuses. Spencer's got his guys. Spencer, step up in the pockets, step into your throws. Don't throw to the other color. All those things that we've all been talking about with Spencer for a while. Yeah, that's the elephant in the room, Robert. A guy with all kinds of talent. You know, the, the Baylor game a couple of weeks ago, he threw three picks. The good news is Baylor only turned that into negative seven total yards. But look, two of those picks are on him. The one pick I think was off of Owens' fingertips that he's got to catch the ball. But the first yeah. pick was just a god-awful throw. I mean, yeah, just but to throw you, you can't on that, and, and, and I would, it's, it is, and he should have thrown it in the stands, 
but they let a guy come through the, the center and the guard let a guy come through the a gap there untouched he was literally in spencer's face when he caught the snap the the proper approach would have been throw it in the stands no instead no spencer wanted to make a place so he threw it at the primary receiver because he didn't have a chance to look right. at anything else and baylor had the primary cover they made the play so in a way, it's Spencer's fault, but what I would have loved, if they blocked that kid, Spencer probably would have looked off the primary, and he had Tay Martin coming across mm-hmm. wide open. Uh, he also had Brennan Presley open. So the passing game wasn't at fault. Spencer's decision-making in the offensive line was at fault on, on that one. Well, and, and look, the uh, two picks, three picks. I mean, then he throws a ridiculous 32-yard touchdown pass to Owens that's like, yeah. It just, you see the variance there with this guy, right? Like he, he giveth, he taketh. And that, I mean, I guess that's what you have to live with if you're Oklahoma state, right. Or, well, or... Th- they have for a while, but Ari, they don't want to continue to live with it. I mean, it's right. not like, <laughs> you know, Mike Gundy and Casey Dunn are going, well, Hey, which Spencer are we going to get today? Good Spencer, bad Spencer. They're trying to help him become good Spencer a greater percentage of the time. I'm kind of anxious because I, I asked Spencer this yesterday. I had a chance for the radio pregame to, to talk to him. And I said, play along with me. Because Spencer is, is really good at what a lot of coaches are good at. When they ask him a question, the media, he'll answer it. He'll talk for 30 seconds to a minute. But when you go back and listen to the answer, it's like nothing it's, there. It's I mean, he's really, he's really good at that. And, uh, and he even he's even joked with me. He goes, "Yeah, watch this." He'll go answer a question with me, and he come and goes, yeah, "What'd you think of that?" And I'm like, <laughs> "I think you didn't tell him anything." And he goes, "Exactly." So he he knows what he's doing. But I asked him to play along with me, and I said, "You know what? I remember your first game at Texas. I thought you played brave." And I stopped right there and let him respond. And he went on, and it was pretty good because he did. He didn't play a perfect game in Austin that night. He fumbled a snap that cost him a touchdown. They ended up having to kick a field goal. He did dig down and recover the fumbled snap, but it was the third and goal at the one. Now, instead of a a touchdown, you got to kick the field goal. Um, He did throw a pick in that game, one, not three, one. But he also, I mean, there were some scrambles where he went all the way across the field. He took some hits, bounced off some guys. I think at one point he got sacked and had to come off the field, but one play later, he comes right back out there. Uh, I would, I would settle for a couple of mistakes if he will have that attitude and play that way, because when he plays that way, Ari, his teammates go crazy. They love it when they get the, you know, I kind of, I kind of compare it to brave the character in Braveheart. I mean, you know, just because he acts, so macho all of a sudden everybody around him gets that warrior attitude and plays the same way spencer has that impact on his teammates when he has that attitude sometimes he has it he doesn't always have it think the cowboys win this game i do i know texas is favored uh i respect texas but i and you know what as much as anything and I think the Cowboy defense is this way, too. I think Jim Knowles, the defensive coordinator, is this way. They realize this is going to be the best test for this defense so far. Yeah. Up till yeah. now, I think it was probably Boise and maybe Baylor, and they passed those tests. But I think they want to see how, how well they can pass this test. And I, I think they will. I, I just think this defense is, is, is really as good as it, it looks. Now, the offensive side of it, um, I look at what Oklahoma did, and I look at what Kennedy Brooks did. And I think Kennedy Brooks is a tremendous back. But I I think Jalen Warren's in that league. So if they can't tackle Kennedy Brooks, they're going to have a hard time with number seven. He doesn't go down easy. So, uh, And then we get back to the Spencer question. Which Spencer do you get? I hope we get the brave one. Robert Allen, Pokes Report and the Oklahoma State uh, Radio Network. Robert, as always, thanks for your time, buddy. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Ari.